Welcome back, America. I'm Hugh Hewitt inside the Beltway, joined now by Mark Lauder. He is the Director of Strategic Communications for Trump Pence 2020. Good morning, Mark. How are you feeling? Is the Lauder family well? Uh, Lauder is family well, Hugh, and I uh, hope yours is as well. It's, uh, you know, I think we're like everyone else, ready to get, ready to get back at it, get outside. Okay, I've got to begin with the, the, the key question, the elephant in the room. Why does President Trump agree every day to meet with a room full of Joe Biden's advance team. It's like 90% of the reporters in the White House press are Joe Biden's advance team. Why does he do that every day? Well, because if he doesn't, then uh, there will be no other side of the story. You'll That the American people will just be force-fed uh, the liberal group think of, of, uh, of, the, of the White House press corps and the rest of the mainstream media. Do, do you see what they're doing this morning? Yesterday he talked about the UV rays, and he talked about maybe we can find a way to use UV in treatment. And, and they all, they, they're they trying to turn him into Homer Simpson pouring bleach down. His, I mean, do, you, do you watch this with amazement at how uniform they are, what group think is going on here? It, it, unfortunately, it, it doesn't surprise me. That, I mean, that, because that's what they do. They look to try to they look to try to poke holes and and to make this president look bad because it fulfills their narrative. I mean, I'm actually reading a story right now from the Associated Press this morning that's almost celebrating that the myth of American exceptionalism is gone. That's I mean, what is that? That's not America is exceptional. Uh, Mark Lauder, I had Attorney General William Barr on the show this week. And the most important thing he said was the last thing he said before he had to go on break. I asked him about the press, and here is what he said. Absolutely. I think it has you know, very you pernicious impact on the well, Republic to have a, a media that is so concentrated and monolithic and, uh, in its views and also so uh, – Deregulations. Uh, Dr. Uh, Birx know, and Dr. Uh, Fauci partisan, have really. um, the Supreme you know, De Tocqueville said that he thought a press would – essentially prevent help prevent America from becoming a despotism, but that's only if it remains, uh, you know, a highly diverse set of voices. And if it ever combines into, a, you know, one viewpoint, then, you know, then it will actually become counterproductive for the republic. So I'm very disturbed by the monolithic nature of our press. Do you agree with the attorney general, Mark Lauder? No, I do. And as a former member of the media and what I trained uh, when I was in college and spent the first dozen or so years after college in the media, what it has become now is, is not what it's supposed to be. Uh, they are more cheerleaders for their own point of view and their partisan outcomes than they are that, the, that fourth estate to, to hold those uh, accountable and answerable. Uh, it, it's really just sad to see what's become of the national media. Well, it's disfigured the mission of the craft. The late Michael Kelly was a very revered guest on this show for many years until he died in Iraq, and he used to respond, uh, re- describe journalism as a craft, not a profession. And the craft has been disfigured by TDS, and it shows up every night in the White House. So I, I'm, I'm circling back to the question I wonder if you and Brad Parscall have raised with the president, which is they ought to insist on some new faces in that room, uh, that they ought to include some neutral people some scientists, some science reporters, some health reporters, because this is a get Trump game every night. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, and I think we do see we have started to see a little bit of that starting to sneak into the room, not not from most of the outlets, because they just send their same liberal uh, their liberal reporters that they always do. But I have seen some more, especially when you get into some of the economic side, the business channels are doing that. That's a good thing. But to your point, we need more of that. But we also need the media to realize that their job is is, is to report and leave it to others to do the analysis and let the president get up there, give the facts, ask your questions. He'll answer your questions. We all know that. Uh, but, but drop your partisan guards, and let's remember this is about America. It's about a crisis. It's about a historic crisis engulfing the country, and they can't let go of their hatred for Donald Trump. I have never been as disappointed in my craft in 30 years of practice in it than in the last 30 days. Now, Mark Lauder, let me talk to you a little bit about the other side of the campaign, uh, Vice President Biden, referred to as a sleepy guy in the basement by the president yesterday in his typical colorful fashion. But the great white shark in the water is that Joe Biden will not come out and talk to the media. 
I mean, he's darting around and he's talking to like the triple A and the double A and the single A players around the country, but he's not talking to me or people who will ask him fair, courteous, but serious questions. I don't know if he's up to it. I think this has definitely played into their strategy. And if you recall, there were, there was some reporting back toward the end of the primary season about how they were trying to pull Joe Biden back. And they were only going to do very short events, very short interviews because he wasn't up to it. And now they've been aided by these stay at home orders because he doesn't have to go out there and actually campaign, expose himself to the media. So he can hide in his basement, do a couple of softball interviews with, uh, you know, with liberal CNN and MSNBC and call it a day. But you got to wonder, he can't even get through those interviews without looking at notes and getting it wrong. It's going to be very stark when this thing gets back up and running. It is a uh, it is a startling amount of uh, confusion that we see in his attempt to deliver a message that has clearly been walked through beforehand. You're a professional comms director and a journalist. You know he's trying to hit some points, right? He's trying to perfect his swing, and he's not making contact. Yeah, and you you really have to wonder, you really have to, I mean, this is not his first time (laughs) with doing this. He should be able to deliver a message, uh, but when he's got to refer to notes, and and even then, getting the fundamentals wrong, I mean, not remembering what year 9-11 took place. I mean, to to use his own phrase, come on, man. Come on. Well, I, 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 I... I'm in my room, D.C. studio, so I do not have my, my Biden board in front of me where I can play all that. But let's talk about the debates, Mark Lauder, because I think we have to begin to focus now. I do not believe the presidential commission should set them up. I think the president's got to insist on five, six, seven of them and say, I'm going to name one, you're going to name one, and those two will agree on a third. Because I, I do think I've never seen the media this completely lopsided in as we begin a presidential campaign. I don't know that you have. How are you going to handle debates? Well, the president has already sent a very clear message to the debate commission that, you know, that, that he's that he's looking at this. And I, I think it's a very strong signal that he's sending that, look, we're not just going to let you create a panel of liberal journalists and do a one sided debate where you attack the president of the United States and run cover for, for the vice pre- for the former vice president. So he's going to demand fairness, and I know that's something that they're still working on. We have time to get this worked out, but uh, you know, clearly the president has shown he's interested in debating Joe Biden. He's not afraid to, to debate Joe Biden, but we need to make sure that there's a level playing field. Are negotiations underway between Trump-Pence 2020 and the Biden campaign on the structure and format of the debates? Uh, I have not heard uh, of that. That does not mean that it's not going on. But since obviously we're all socially distanced right now, I can't just like look look around the corner and see if those things are going on right now or not. Okay. Well, I would ask Brad Parscale to speak to that. It would be if we had a working press corps, they would ask that question of him. And I do believe in the arbitration panel approach where President Trump names a journalist and Vice President Biden names a journalist and those two journalists agree on a third that would end up being – and they change them for every debate. And the locales that the Presidential Debate Commission came up with are fine. But I just – I cannot, after watching this night after night, it is confirming, I think, in the American public that the media is not a fair and neutral prison. It's, it has been most revealing of the media and of Deborah Burks and of Tony Fauci's genius and of the president's willingness to be led by them – but it is most confirming of this deep, deep TDS, Mark. And I don't know how you do your job every day with this. I know you have to. They're all my friends, too. I like them all. I got nothing against them. But they are very unaware. Self-awareness is gone from the, quote, media. No, I think you're right. And, and, and this is one of those prime examples why you know, I think great swaths of the country have just, they, when they look at the media, they look at what they see going on, they realize that they, they don't represent them. They're not out there to inform them. They're out there trying to sway them and, and change their opinions. And it's why you see the trust in the media, the viewership with the traditional uh, liberal networks at their all-time lows because people are tired of being force-fed this liberal nonsense and being looked down upon if you don't agree with it. Well, I will, I will note they are, they are experiencing a Trump bump and a crisis bump. Uh, prior to the advent of the crisis and the daily briefings, the network 
uh, cable news television stations were crashing in viewership, but now they're back up and robust because people want information. I don't think they want gotcha journalists trying to embarrass the president and members of his team and try and get them to fight. I think they really would like to know the science, Mark Lauder. I, I've been begging them. John Roberts finally asked a question the other day about what do we know about the scientific uh, mutation of the virus? And Deborah Burke said, good question. The president said, good question. It took like 30 days to get to the science. I, I, I despair of this media, and I despair of your job. I do not think you're going to – it's a phalanx. It's like an old Greek Spartan phalanx of anti-Trump people coming at you every day. Last word to you, Mark. I don't know how you deal with it. Well, I think that that's the one thing, and, and just keeping it up, keeping up and keeping out there. You know, most people don't think of it this way, but I do. Every time the president takes to his full social media platform, he reaches a Super Bowl-sized audience. That's how big that, that audience is. And so he is the first president in history that can bypass the mainstream media and get his message directly to the American people. Now he's doing both. He's using them, and he's going around them. Mark Lauder, good to talk to you. Thanks for coming back on. Continue on. Follow him on Twitter at Mark, M-A-R-C underscore Lauder, L-O-T-T-E-R, at Mark underscore Lauder. 